Tonight, Channel 4 News can reveal previously secret evidence from the CIA that suggests Libya was not involved in the Lockerbie bombing 25 years ago. The only man convicted of the atrocity, which left 270 people dead, the Libyan Abdul Assad al Magrahi, died last year. There's growing unease in Scotland about how the case was investigated and handled, and mounting evidence that Libya, which paid compensation to the victims, had completely nothing to do with it. What of other Middle Eastern countries who've all denied any involvement? Julian Rush has this report. The questions about Lockerbie just refused to go away. Was Al Magrahi, the convicted Lockerbie bomber, innocent after all, the victim of a miscarriage of justice? Was Libya framed a politically expedient scapegoat to resolve a Middle East hostage crisis? And why, since the fall of Colonel Gaddafi, has no evidence emerged to confirm Libya's guilt? So compelling are the doubts that now even an experienced Middle East diplomat, for long carefully neutral on the issue, is changing his mind. The more I think about it, the more I find it difficult to believe that, that Libya was actually guilty. If you're asking me, balance of probabilities, yes, I think they didn't do it. Two Libyan officials acting as operatives of the Libyan intelligence service. The US took the world by surprise when they accused the Libyans some three years after the bombing. In secret, they were hearing otherwise. The CIA, we can reveal, was being told by one of its own spies with access to sources high in a key Middle Eastern government that it wasn't the Libyans. It was the PFLPGC, he reported, a Syrian-based Palestinian militia led by Ahmed Jabril and linked to Iran. They'd been the original prime suspects. US intelligence reports had said Iran had commissioned the attack from them as revenge for the unprovoked shooting down of an Iranian airliner by the USS Vincennes. Exactly what he knew has remained secret until now. In early 2001, he'd made a sworn deposition before a US judge. We found it, forgotten in defense files of the Lockerbie trial, as it had come too late to be used in court. I, Richard Fuse, do solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Dr. Richard Fuse was a businessman in the Middle East and Russia with contacts in high places. He was also a CIA agent. Fuse's interview was tightly controlled by US government lawyers. CIA observers sat in. There was to be nothing on his CIA employment, what he called context, only broad brush answers. Broad brush would simply be that numerous high officials in the Syrian government were quite affirmative of Jibril's involvement in Pan Am 103. Can you give us the names of those officials? No, uh, then I'm starting to get into context if I give you those names. Can you tell us how many there were? Perhaps 10, 15. This all matters because Fuse was hearing it from the Syrians as late as 1995, four years after the Libyans had been charged. And if anyone knew whether the PFLPGC was involved or not, it would be the group's sponsors and protectors, the Syrians. Both continued to deny publicly they had anything to do with the Lockerbie bombing. Fuse gave no indication of his Syrian sources' motives, but he was adamant. They were reliable. They had close and regular yes. contact with Ahmed Jabril. Did any of them tell you who their sources were? Again, staying out of context, broad brush, my recollection is that they were direct. They were not hearsay sources on their part. Direct in the sense, as you understood it, that you were being told by the Syrian government that Jabril and or members of the PFL PGC were taking credit for the bombing. Yes. Dr. Fuse confirmed that he'd reported back all that he'd heard to his CIA bosses, which begs the question, why did the focus of the investigation continue to be on Libya? Well, many believe the US implicated Libya to get Iran's help in freeing hostages like Terry Waite, held in Lebanon by Iranian-backed groups. Archives from the time suggest America was ready to make a deal for their release. The evidence from the documentation that we have available from intelligence sources, from Bush's meetings with foreign leaders, for example, does strongly suggests that there was a negotiation process underway between the United States and Iran for the return of the hostages. 
Megrahi was eventually convicted. It was controversial then and is more so today. A swathe of new evidence has emerged to cast doubt on the verdict. The most important, by a long way, is forensic. This charred fragment of circuit board was critical to McGrahi's conviction. A prosecution expert testified it was similar in all respects to circuit boards in timers supplied to Libya by a Swiss company where McGrahi shared an office. But these notes reveal the expert had found a crucial manufacturing difference between them. It was confirmed by independent scientists from McGrahi's legal team who were only given the notes eight years after the conviction. The conclusion of that would be that they came from different manufacturing routes, different manufacturing sources and were not the same, were not the same boards and could not be described as being similar in any, in any way. All new evidence, including ours, even if it points away from Libya, is meant to be investigated by Scotland's police. They never closed the case on Lockerbie, and they say in public they're not done yet. What contact have you had, if any, with the police or any other investigating authority that is meant to be looking at the Lockerbie case? I've had no um, contact from any authorities whatsoever. We asked Police Scotland why they hadn't interviewed him. They said they wouldn't comment on specific lines of inquiry. What many fear is that the police are single-mindedly focused on Libya simply to get vindication of McGrahi's conviction. Scotland's police have made no progress in Libya itself. They blame the continuing unstable situation there. Well, if the new evidence is awkward uh, to the perceived wisdom about what did happen, then perhaps there's not going to be the vigour to pursue it. It's important that any investigation doesn't just look for evidence to support an assertion that it looks for all the evidence. We cannot leave any stone unturned. We cannot leave any circuit board uninvestigated because this is such a colossal event. 25 years on, one of the biggest global terrorist events ever, and we don't follow every single bit of evidence? I think that's worrying. Politically, it seems it may be in everyone's interests to let Lockerbie fade into history. Scotland wants to protect the reputation of its criminal justice system. The Libyans have more urgent considerations, a country to secure and little to gain if the former government is proven to be innocent. And above all, the US and Iran are once again inching towards reconciliation. Evidence of Iran's involvement in Lockerbie could potentially impact the talks on Iran's nuclear program. Among the people who'll gather here to remember those who died that dark December night, there will be some who believe that justice has not been done. 25 years on, it's still uncertain whether the truth of what happened will ever be known. And that does a grave injustice to the families of the dead. Calls in Scotland for an inquiry into how the whole case has been handled are being refused by the Scottish Government and a new appeal against McGrahi's conviction looks unlikely. After a quarter of a century, there are still more questions than answers.